Okay. Hi, I'm Fred Christie, and I'm here to offer a reply to Jonathan Crone's C-SPAN video, the two minutes he provided for the conservative group. I don't recall them, the uh, particular group off the top of my head. The first prong, just very initially with the film, you don't need to know anything about the content of what he says, is that a lot of adults, a lot of experienced people who've had real lives, you know, gone to college whatsoever, are applauding and taking seriously the words of a freaking 13-year-old. A young kid, right, who hasn't been to college, probably isn't even in high school, they are taking seriously. That alone indicates that the conservative movement is intellectually bankrupt. The fact that they could buy the book of someone that young indicates that they're not responding to serious intellectual argument, right? Real people in academia spend decades grappling with difficult issues, grappling with really hard questions of economic policy, social policy, political policy. These are questions which aren't trivial and which a 13-year-old kid doesn't have the intellectual or emotional That's maturity right. to really understand. In fact, it's arguable whether or not ostensible adults, people over the age 18, have that level of maturity, but at the very least we can be pretty confident that the average kid or even very intelligent kids really don't. Now I'm not trying to discourage someone like Mr. Crone from learning, right? We clearly need more int young, intelligent kids like Mr. Crone. The problem is when adults don't have anything in response, when adults have nothing more serious to say. So then let's look at his some of his claims, right? One of his arguments is that you can't have policy without principle. Mm -hmm. I have to ask, has he read a history book? Has he considered any politics throughout history? We're perfectly aware that all of the time, policy can be created without, without ideology. Policy can be created without principles. We're aware of this. All of the time, throughout every empire, every political system known to man, policy is often created because of elites, it's created because of interest groups, it's created because of all sorts of factions, it's created because of all sorts of factors that have almost nothing to do with principled oppositions. And that's not even necessarily a bad thing. There's nothing principled to be said about why we should build a new road, right? There's nothing principled about whether or not we should have a mental asylum <laughs> in one location or another. These are questions that don't have to do with deep, uncompromising principle, but have to do with figuring out the facts, figuring out the benefits, arguing mm -hmm. costs and benefits. And yes, mm -hmm. principles and ideology inform that That's discussion. Right. But right. the real process of being in a democratic society, or indeed any society, has almost nothing to do with these very big overarching principles. So then let's analyze, just as an empirical statement, is he correct that conservatives, on average, real conservatives, people who really focus on, have these four principles that he mentions? Now, one could make the argument, as I do, that the word conservative has been improperly maligned. Question, question. What is the four uh, principles that uh, Mr. Cron has stated? He had, he mentioned respect for conservatism, or sorry, respect for the Constitution. He mentioned respect for life. Uh, and he had two more. I'd have to review the, the video again. Uh, but the, the term conservative has been improperly maligned. Real conservatives are really out there. People who really believe that social change should be done conservatively. Noam Chomsky is a conservative by that definition. Now, most people know Noam Chomsky is a raving anarchist leftist liberal. But in fact, his position is that societies are very complex institutions and shouldn't be changed <coughs> by large overarching means without real understanding and what coming from real social movements. That it's a conservative idea because it does not say that social change should happen rapidly. It says it should happen slowly and with a lot of consciousness and awareness. So the term conservative has a very particular meaning that's almost been completely divorced from the meaning in regular American politics. Right. In could, fact, could, you, could you wrap it up in like uh, 30 seconds because no. uh, low battery? Uh, no, I can't. Oh, you can't? And so uh, just... Uh, in fact, like conservatives are in fact... Status. So let's just look at one of his principles. Respect for the Constitution. Did George W. Bush, a quote-unquote conservative, a man who millions of conservatives no, voted for, have respect for the Constitution when he enacted the Patriot Act, when he was illegally monitoring peace groups? Or how can one have respect for the Constitution when one ignores the fact that treaties under the Constitution are high law and any violation of any kind of international treaty the United States is a good faith signatory to would be in fact a de facto crime against the Constitution That's and right. yet, every single president since World War II has engaged in at least one 
violation of some major treaty, where, whether it be the UN Charter, whether it be the Geneva Convention, whether it be the Nuremberg Convention, whether it be any number of treaties the United States flouts, ignores, or refuses to sign, which indicates that this so-called respect for the Constitution lasts exactly as long as the real quote-unquote conservative read statist business powers allow it to. When the Constitution is useful for their ends, they will mention it. But when it is not, when it prevents them from bombing Iraqis, or when it prevents them from monitoring people who might undermine their social hegemony, then we see that concern of the Constitution disappear. Jonathan Crow needs to get out of the realm of ideology and needs to get in the realm of reality, where real people have real ideologies and real opinions that can't just be changed because he writes a book that makes them seem nice. In fact, Republicans, anyone who votes for a Republican Party, is voting for horrendous ideologies, is voting for a party that has been willing to slaughter third world people, slaughter Iraqis, back dictators, and destroy our economy for the sake of a privileged few. And there's no rewriting of history that says that conservatism is in fact something else that will change that fact. So read a book, Jonathan Crone.